and 4,000. Then it becomes cellulose between 2,000, 2,000, and 4,000. Then it becomes cellulose. So this one is cellulose. So when the value of N, but they have this general molecular formula. When N is between 24 and 30, you are talking about starch. Then when N is between 2,000 and 4,000, then you are talking about cellulose. Glycogen, in which N is between 5,000 and 10,000. So when you have N between 5,000 and 10,000, then you talk about glycogen. Glycogen. So you can see that the value of N is very critical because it determines the particular carbohydrates you are talking about. The polysaccharides are regarded as high polymers of monosaccharides. And on hydrolysis, many molecules of uh, monosaccharides are produced. That means in polysaccharides, you have numerous molecules or many molecules of monosaccharides. Reducing and non-reducing sugar. Glucose is a reducing sugar because of the presence of the CHO group. CHO group is talking about the carbonyl group. So this carbonyl group ensures or gives the glucose is reducing properties. So that is why glucose is known as a reducing sugar because of the presence of this carbonyl group in the CHO group. Fructose is not a reducing sugar because the functional group is absent. So that means if you are asked to differentiate between glucose and fructose, the difference is that glucose is a reducing sugar because of the presence of the carbonyl group, while fructose is not a reducing sugar because of the absence of carbonyl group. Sucrose is not a reducing sugar since it does not have free carbonyl group. So that means sucrose is not a reducing sugar also because it does not have free carbonyl group. It has carbonyl group, but that carbonyl group is not mobile. That means they are fixed. The carbonyl group in glucose is fixed, so it's not mobile. That is why uh, sucrose is said to be a non-reducing sugar because of the fact that the carbonyl group is fixed, that is, it's not mobile. Uh, sucrose is disaccharide because it consists of two molecules of monosaccharide, while glucose and fructose are monosaccharides. The hydrolysis of sucrose is carried out by boiling it in hydrochloric acid and it is hydrolyzed to an equal mixture of glucose and fructose. That means, what that one is saying that on hydrolysis of sucrose, which is a disaccharide, yield glucose and fructose. The hydrolysis of starch is carried out by dilute acid to yield dextrin. What is dextrin? Dextrin is a short chain intermediate product. Is a short chain intermediate product. That means that product is intermediate in the sense that it is not the final product. After which something must have, act, add, um, something must have acted on it, it now gives the final product. Disaccharide mainly maltose and glucose. So that means that on hydrolysis of starch, you have an intermediate which is dextrin, after which on further hydrolysis, it yields maltose and glucose. Test for sugars and starch. How can we test for sugars and starch? Add a few drops of Fellin solution of 5 cm cube of glucose solution in a test tube. A brick red precipitate is obtained on boiling. So when a few drops of Fellin solution is added to a solution that is containing glucose, that is sugar, a brick red precipitate confirms the presence of sugar. That is a distinctive test for sugar. Then the other way, add a few drops of iodine to some boiled starch. 
a dark blue coloration which appears on eating and reappears on cooling results. So when a few drop of iodine is added to boiled starch, a dark blue color coloration which appears on eating, when it is heated, you have a dark blue coloration and it reappears on cooling, confirm the presence of starch. Use of glucose and starch. Use of glucose. What are the use of glucose? It is used as the immediate source of energy for sick people and sportsmen. So sportsmen use glucose as immediate source of energy. Two, it is used in the manufacture of jam and sweets. Use of starch. It is used mainly as food. It is used to produce ethanol and glucose. It is used as stiffening agent in laundry. In the laundry, they use it as a stiffening agent. That is the starch. You put it so that you, to make the cloth, clothing material stiff. So that is one of the uses of starch. Proteins. Proteins. Amino acids are the basic structure, structural unit of protein. That means the structural unit of protein is amino acid. Each amino acid contains an amino group and a carboxylic group. This is an amino group and this is a carboxylic group. So that means in protein, what makes protein protein is the presence of this amino group and carboxylic group. Those are the two functional groups present in protein. The source of protein is present in our food. The structure of protein combines the amino end and the carboxylic end. The properties of proteins are Proteins are easily denatured by temperature above 40 degrees centigrade. Two, proteins form a colloidal solution. Three, proteins are affected by pH. pH is a determinant of protein. So they are affected by pH. Test and use of proteins. Add three or four drops of concentrated tetrasulfate C. Um, add three or four drops of concentrated triazonitrate 5 acid to 2 cm cube of an egg white solution. The formation of an intense yellow color indicates the presence of proteins. That means we should add three or four drops of HNO3, which is known as trioxonitrate 5 acid to 2 cm cube of egg white solution. The formation of an intense yellow color indicates the presence of proteins. Use of proteins. What are the use of protein? It controls the sugar metabolism in the body. Two, it is a critical food group for the body. Questions. What is the enzyme that acts on protein? Two, what are the products obtained on hydrolysis of maltose? Three, what is the formula of polysaccharides? Four, list two factors that affect protein. Five, mention two uses of starch. Answer to question number one. What is the enzyme that acts on protein? It is proteases. Proteases are the enzymes that act on protein because enzymes are specific in action. What are the products obtained on hydrolysis of maltose? The, its hydrolysis yields two molecules of glucose. Its hydrolysis use, uh, yields two molecules of glucose. That means in when maltose is subjected to hydrolysis, you have two molecules of glucose. What is the formula of polysaccharides? The formula of polysaccharide is C6, C6, H10, O5N. That is the formula of polysaccharides. Four, list two factors that affect protein. Protein are affected by temperature above 40 degrees centigrade and pH. Those are the two factors that affect proteins. Question number five. Mention two uses of starch. One, it is used mainly as food. Two, it is used to produce ethanol and glucose. We have 
successfully completed the SS3 syllabus. And this syllabus has some important topics which are volumetric analysis, qualitative analysis, metals and their compounds, organic compounds such as polysaccharides, monosaccharides, and disaccharides. I wish you the very best of luck. Read your books. Prepare very well so that you can fly high. Thank you.